Bengals Saints. Let's go ahead and get into this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do a little betting preview here. We're going to watch uh, CBS's free expert picks, props, whatever for the Saints Bengals. We're going to take a look at some DVOA. We're going to take a look at some betting trends, some injury report, and we're going to do some predictions, uh, picks, things like that for uh, betting. And also, as a fan, what I'm looking for for the Saints. Joined by Pete Prisco and Brady Quinn. Let's start with Bengals and Saints. Jameis Winston back at practice. Still don't know at this point if he's going to be able to play in that game. Uh, as Andy Dalton may again face his former team. This would be three straight starts. Th this is a big. This is a big sticking point for me. As you know, I think Andy Dalton is much better of an option for quarterback. For, for the New Orleans Saints than Jameis Winston. So this is being recorded on a Friday, and I don't know, I had to look at my phone to see what day of the week it was. It's been that kind of week, ladies and gentlemen. But if Jameis is named the starter, then I'm going to be all over the Bengals. I mean, I'll be in the Dome, but and I'll be quietly rooting for the Bengals because if it's Jameis, I, I just think the offense is going to take such a step back and – the worst part about that is that Jameis is coming into it rusty. He hasn't played in a few weeks. Coming off of an injury, we don't know how what level he is. Is he at 100%, 90%, 80%, 80%? Who knows? Uh, and, and the offense is just now getting into a rhythm with Andy Dalton. So if the offense now is in a rhythm, they're going to be taken out of a rhythm because they're just different players, right? So to me, it makes no sense for Allen and who, whoever to bench Dalton and play Winston. But that is talk. Like, that is talk down here. You know, obviously, I mention it all the time. I'm two blocks away from the Superdome. I'm hearing chatter locally that if Winston can go, they may play him. Starts over three different seasons where he faces his former team. Well, I mean, look, when you think about, when you think about this offense, uh, it's all Taysom Hill. I mean, you got to go to the gimmick. I that's not true. I mean, that's a super reactionary. That, that Pete Prisco just told You know what he just told me? I watched the highlights. I watched the highlight tape from last week, the little YouTube highlights game recap thing, the six minutes of the biggest plays of the game. And it was all Taysom Hill that game, sure. But he missed. Did you also miss that Alvin Kamara had 200-plus yards of total offense? Did you also miss, like, the whole game? I mean, the whole it, Taysom got the shine, no doubt about it. But that was much more of a well-rounded performance from our offense than just Taysom. The offense is not just the Taysom Hill show. The offense is not gimmicky. Taysom's plays aren't even gimmicky. You know, Taysom's plays aren't these crazy gadget plays. They're pretty, pretty standard, pretty standard uh, kind of quarterback powers or quarterback reads. Very standard stuff we see in the NFL. It's like saying that Lamar Jackson's plays are gimmicky or Josh Allen when they run him is gimmicky. So that 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 makes no sense to me. Saying that Taysom is the whole offense, especially when Alvin Kamara had twenty plus touches for two hundred some yards. I love the gimmick. It's working. It worked that, last game. But that's what he is. He's a gimmick, and it's good. Get him involved in the offense as a gimmick. He never was a quarterback, but I'm okay with him as a gimmick, particularly when you don't have your starting quarterback. So, I, I, I don't want to harp on this, Pete, but, like, what's the gimmick part? This isn't the Wildcat. You know, like, this, this isn't – which nowadays, like, the, the halfback directs or, or stuff like that isn't – they're not gimmicks either. You know, it's not like Taysom is – running some crazy wildcat offense we've never seen before. He All he's doing is running uh, uh, these quarterback running plays because, I mean, he can throw. You know, I mean, he's played full games as quarterback. He's gotten, you know, games where he'll throw 20-plus times a game. So it's not like he cannot throw. It wouldn't be a gimmick if he threw. You know, it wouldn't be a gimmick if he ran a passing play. So, I mean, we're, we're whatever, 30 seconds in. But th this is just a really weird – to me, it's just this guy has ha just has not watched the Saints. Uh, I think it worked last week. The problem I have with the Saints, and I'm wrong about this because I was dead wrong in the offseason. I thought their defense would be top five. I thought they'd be a dominant unit, and they haven't been that. So I think when you look at Joe Burrow, their passing game hasn't quite clicked the way he thought it would click, um, how the, many people thought it would click. I think they get it going here. I know they're coming off a division loss. Now they're back out on the road again. That's tough to do. It's a tough place to play. But I'm going to go with the Bengals in this one. I think Burrow... Uh, we'll get the thing cranked up. And I just don't think the Saints defense is as good as it's. So the thing with the Saints defense is like, you know, before the Seattle game, you could argue that they, they were playing at a top five defense level uh, because, you know, they held the Buccaneers. I mean, that, we all know what happened in that game. It was 3-3 going into the fourth. Um, at Atlanta, you know, Atlanta popped off, but then they kind of stopped them at the second half. Um, 
you know, and then the Seahawks, granted, the Seahawks dominated. We talked about that in the recap. The Seahawks had eight, eight yards per play. Uh, the Seahawks kind of gutted the Saints. What has been good for the Saints has been Marshawn Lattimore. Okay, so he's been good this year, no doubt about it. What also has been good is the Saints' pass rush. I think Cameron Jordan has been really, really good this year. Cam Jordan, probably my all-time favorite Saint. Drew Brees is Drew Brees might be number one. You know, it's hard hard to hard to argue with Drew Brees, but Cam Jordan. I mean, he. I've I've told people this before, but I go to all the Pelicans games, and Cam Jordan goes to all the Pelicans games. And when he walks in, he is the people's champion. When he walks in, he's shaking hands, he's high fiving, he always takes pictures with people. He's a great, he's just a great ambassador for the city. Um, Cam Jordan is awesome, so it's good to see him again being really disruptive and really dominant. I mean, he was amazing against Seattle. So I think that pass rush against a Bengals offensive line who has been shaky at best. Joe Burrow has been getting lit up, um, you know, behind that offensive line. He's been getting sacked a lot. I think he's the most hit quarterback in the NFL this year, and I'm pretty sure he's on pace to break. Uh, the, the sack record of, of quarterback being sacked the most, I believe still held uh, by Houston Texans' own uh, David Carr, Derek's older brother. So I think that could be a problem for the Bengals. This is how I see this game going. Uh, and I know uh, Big Pete said he likes the Bengals. I kind of lean the Bengals as well. I kind of lean the lean the Bengals as well because I think the Bengals need to get right. I think this line is a little short. I think this line is taking into taking into account that the Saints came off of a big win uh, or, or a, a win where they looked good, not a big win in, in, in opposition. But the Bengals are a huge step up in, in competition. And the Bengals are, um, you know, a step, a step. They're not playing to their to their levels offensively, but the Bengals' defense is playing really good. So I'm concerned how this Saints offense that looks so good, how that offense will look against a defense that I consider probably top 10. So that's something that I'm interested in seeing. And another reason why I kind of lean Cincinnati, and we'll go over this after this video, is the Saints injury report is starting to look pretty serious. The Saints injury report is starting to have some very important players on there. And with those players out, it's going to be just Alvin Kamara. And I don't know if that's enough. If we have to, you know, if the Bengals, let's say the Bengals do get route right. And let's say the Bengals do score, we'll just say 24 points, 20, 28 points, somewhere in there. Can the Saints go toe to toe with that offense? Can the Saints kind of kind of match uh, the Bengals offensively if their defense is playing that good? Let's go ahead and watch the rest of this, and, and we'll kind of break all what I'm saying down uh, when we're looking at the injury report and looking at the trends. Uh, was expected to be. You know, Pete, it's funny. I really tossed back and forth on this one and trying to decide who I wanted to go with. I mean, a point and a half. It's not that much to give up uh, if you're the Cincinnati Bengals. That being said. You know, offensively, they've just been inconsistent this year, and I really thought they turned the corner a couple weeks ago, uh, but maybe they haven't. And look, Andy Dalton has played well enough. I don't think they've asked him to do too much. And as you talked about, kind of relied more on Taysom Hill and, and some of the gimmicks, different things he can do. There's a chance Alvin Kamara and both Jar Jarvis Landry are going to be back in this game. That would obviously be a, be a big boost. This <laughs> I mean, do these guys watch the game? Alvin Kamara was back last game. There's a chance Alvin Kamara's going to be back this game. He had 200 yards last game, Brady. I mean, seriously, I mean, do these guys watch the game? I mean, I mean, you got to wonder saying stuff like that. But to go back to what he said about the, the Bengals offense, I think the Bengals offense is st stuttering slash stammering because they haven't figured out how to beat this kind of cover two kind of sit back defense. I lean mostly towards the under in this game because I think that both defenses are above average. I think both offenses are conservative. And I think that if the Saints play the way that the rest of the NFL has played with the Bengals, they can shut them down. Not to mention if Marshawn Lattimore and company are, are dealing with uh, the wide receiver core of the Bengals. I, I could, and you can't really run on the Saints very well. Normally, normally the Saints run defense is pretty strong. Uh, I think the Saints offense may be a little too linear uh, to put up massive points against a uh, against a, a good defense as we put up massive points against the Seahawks, but the Seahawks, people put up massive points against them all the time. So I think that we're coming off of a game where the betting public is going to see, uh, they're going to see the Saints' previous box score, and they're going to say, well, the Saints' offense is sweet, they're at home, uh, maybe they'll replicate it. But I think really we could be in store for like a really kind of low-scoring game. To me, this has one of those like – one of those like 24 20 kind of games 24 17 kind of games written on it um somewhere in that vein and and i do lean sensi with with the way the injury report is shaping up 
Jets offense, even though they'll, they'll be without Michael Thomas. And defensively, look, I think they can match up well with this offensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals and put Joe Burrow under a lot of duress. So, look, the trend this year has been underdogs, in particular home underdogs. So I'll go ahead and take the point and a half. Uh, and you touched on it. Tough place to play. Been there before. That noise is deafening. So I do think that's going to play a major factor in this one. So I'll take the point and a half here in the Saints. The, the, the point and a half is always interesting because it's like, man, I mean, you're, you're saying the Saints are going to win this game. If the Saints beat the Bengals in this game, now granted, decent spot, you know, at home, uh, the, the Dome is one of the biggest home field advantages for sure. And a lot of people are making a big deal about this Joe Burrow returning to New Orleans, returning to the Superdome. I always think that's really interesting because, so Baton Rouge, where LSU is, is about an hour away from New Orleans. Uh, Burrow obviously played the, the national championship in, in the Superdome and Jamar Chase as well, but he's from Ohio. It's not like he's from New Orleans, who, and then played in New Orleans. He played at LSU for, for basically a year, and and then he went back to Ohio. So I, this weird, like, homecoming thing for Joe Burrow, it's it's a it's a weird love affair. People, I, I will say this. He, he is huge in New Orleans. Like, people love him in Louisiana. People love him in all on the Gulf Coast. Uh, you know, I've seen Jamar uh, Chase and Burrow billboards in New Orleans, which which is crazy when, you know, they really have no ties. So I think you'll hear a lot about that in the media. There may be some Bengals fans. I'm sure there will be some Joe Burrow LSU jerseys out there, but it's not going to be – it's going to be a Saints home game. You know, like I, I, it's not going to be a, a – a parade of roses for Joe Burrow. He's, he's going to be playing on the road. Make no mistake about that. But let's go ahead and break down some of these numbers. So we're, we're looking at the VEASAN uh, matchup thing. I love using VEASAN. Everyone knows that uh, I trust VEASAN for my consensus uh, numbers and for my odd movements and stuff like that. So that's what we're using here. So if we look at this, what I want to look at first is the injury report. All right, so look at the Bengals. Okay, the Bengals, Jonah Williams, knee. Let's look at the Saints. Bam, or, this isn't even showing all the Saints stuff. So the Saints have uh, Lattimore and Winston on here, both questionable. Uh, let's go to ESPN then, and we'll have to look at their injury report. VEASAN, I was just talking VEASAN up, and all of a sudden their, their injury report. Uh, so let's look at the Saints here. All right, so Landry is questionable, and this is yesterday's injury report. Uh, so Jar Landry's questionable, all right, non-participant, DNP. Michael Thomas, he's DNP, he's not going to play. Jameis Winston, we all know about that. Chris Alave, questionable. He's a concussion protocol. The way that the concussion protocol is working nowadays in the NFL, I would doubt he plays. So let's just say Olave doesn't play, Thomas doesn't play, and Landry doesn't play. All right. And and uh, Deontay is also DNP. All right. So if we look at that, right, then they're going to roll out here wide receivers being Marquez Callaway, uh, I don't even know. Like I don't even know who. I'm not even sure who. If we had like four or five receivers out there, who they would be. You know, we're we're missing we're missing a lot here. You know, like I said, Deontay Hardy's out, Landry's out, Alave's out, Thomas is out. So all of a sudden, you're talking about Callaway, Traquan, and and uh, IDK. I mean, I, I I really don't know here. So that's where I'm at more with the injury report and why I think that the Bengals could have a pretty serious uh, advantage when it comes to that. Let's go back to the matchup here. So the game opened at a pick, I believe, and has moved to this, moved to two. I don't think it ever got to two and a half, bounced back to where it sits now at one and a half. Um, I think you'll probably see, if I had to guess, you'll see some Bengals money come in late. Uh, I think people will see that as like a short kind of a short line here with Cincy. Again, remember, boys, uh, the home field flip. So the home field usually flips about three points. Now, what that means is if these two met on a neutral, or uh, what that means is the Saints are getting three-ish points for being at home. So if you take away three-ish points, let's just take away three. If you take away three points, if this was played on a neutral, that means that the Saints would be plus five somewhere in there if this was played in cincy that means that the saints would be plus probably uh, if you i don't know if since he's a full three you do like it'd be like seven you'd, you'd probably be like seven so you'd have cincy plus seven is what this is telling you if it was cincinnati at home um so team trends um let's see these, these are these are always kind of so 90% on this one is play on Cincinnati on the road against decent rushing teams averaging more than 4.3 rushing yards per 
average. These are always fun to look at. I'm not a big fan of trends because stuff changes so much. It's so volatile. Uh, let's look at DVOA. Y'all know I like DVOA. So pass, this is defense. So pass defense, uh, The let's look for Cincy. So Cincy is number seven in pass defense. The Saints are number 13. Rush defense, the Cincy is number 11. And the Saints have dropped to number, where are they? How, how am I always so bad at finding these teams? Can y'all see? Do y'all see this? Oh, here they are. So right next to Cincy. So the Saints are 10th. So you have, see, that's what I'm saying with this under, right? Is that these teams, I think, are known for their offense, New Orleans and, uh, and Cincy. But you're lo really looking at either the 7th and 13th best, pa best passing defense. Sounded like Mike Tyson there for a second. Pa uh, path defense. Uh, and then you're also looking at the number 10 and 11 rush defense. So I think overall, if I'm looking at this game, if from a betting perspective, I would be looking at unders i'd be looking to play like first five minute you can for, you can find like first five and a half minute under like no score in the first five and a half minutes um you know first quarter under stuff like that uh it's probably going to be sitting at like seven and a half um you, you can you can find unders on you know different player props things like that so that that's kind of how i would get at the game i would get at the game with Going into it thinking like, okay, if I expect this game to be kind of a defensive battle, slow starts, kind of feeling each other out, uh, how can I attack that? And that's going to be things like team totals, uh, stuff like that. I don't have a bet on the game at all right now. Gun to my head, I would lean Cincy um, on probably, you know, I should probably take the points. I would lean Cincy, but that certainly is going to wait to see what the, what the injury report is ends up being closer to game time. I don't think this is one of those games where you got to really worry about um, the line moving too much. I think you can wait to see the injuries. I think there's a chance that if Winston gets named a starter, you may get some money on the Saints, which, like I said, I would then play back against the Saints. I would take the Bengals. Uh, I think the Bengals, too, have been like a dead under team. Um, yeah, they've been... They've been uh, Five straight this year to the under. And I think that goes back to last year. I think they're like nine straight to the under. So that's a trend too, is that um, the Bengals have played five straight unders. So the Bengals are kind of a dead under team right now, and they're on the road. Uh, so you know, the estimated score here is 23-20 uh, is what they're telling you here. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at from the betting side. Now from the, from the team side, right, from the Saints side, I want to see more. I want to see more of what we saw last game. I want to see more of. Um, I want to see more of creativity from Pete Carmichael and Dennis Allen. I want to see Alvin Kamara getting the ball more. I want to see him getting involved more in the passing game, quicker in the passing game. Oh, that's another. That's another good betting uh, thing here. Is that if we expect Andy to be under duress, or yeah, under duress. And we expect the defense to shine. That means that the and there's no playmakers on the outside, right? No Thomas, no Alave, uh, no Landry. If that's the case, then I will be looking at Alvin Kamara's receiving prop, which last week was I think three and a half. So if it's sitting at three and a half again, then I'm probably going to take that because I'll assume that they'll have no choice but to go uh, to to Alvin Kamara on on dump passes and screens, but that's what I want to see. I want to see him get used in the passing game. I want to see Taysom Hill continue to be used. I want to see them not overuse him. I don't want them to see last game and then say like, "Oh shit, we need to give Taysom twenty touches." I don't want to see that. All right, I want to see Andy be named the starter. That's a big part of it too. I don't want to see Winston play. Um, but that's really it. This is a tight game. This is a game where. It's a bigger game for the Bengals than the Saints. I think, you know, the Saints, if the Saints win this game, I think the Bengals are in, like, legitimate trouble. I think if the Saints win this game, I think the, the Bengals are fugazi. I think the Bengals all of a sudden are just not that good. You know, the, the Bengals all of a sudden, they got some real problems they need to fix. Zach Taylor's probably on the hot seat if they lose this game. Yeah, they're dro You know, if they're dropping, because I don't think the Saints are... I wouldn't consider them a good team at this point, um, especially with all these injuries. If the Saints lose this game, to me, it's, it's kind of like the Minnesota game, where it's like you're expected to lose it, you're injury-riddled, 
you're kind of figuring yourself out. You're down to like your fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth string receivers. So I wouldn't put too much of this on the Saints to come out with a win. You always want to win at home, but you, as long as you're taking care of the teams that you should beat, you know, if we look at the Saints schedule here, if you're taking care of the Seattles, um, the Pittsburghs, you know, the Atlantas at home, um, the Carolinas, the Houstons, may, maybe sneak one against like an Arizona or a Vegas. If you're doing that and you're coming out with, you know, six, seven, eight wins, I think that's fine. You know, so I don't think there's when you drop the Minnesotas and you drop the the, the Cincy's or the Baltimore's or the or the. You know, the Frisco's like I, I, th- those aren't that big of a deal because we're we're not in that world where we're trying to win uh, 10, 12, 11 games. You know, so um, it's much more important for the Bengals to win for sure. But I want to see more. I want to see more of the same. I understand that we're in a difficult spot with um, we're in a difficult spot with the injuries. Uh, the Bengals need a win. They're they're desperate for sure. So that's kind of where I'm at here on the game. No real hard play for me right now. Like I said, I'm looking under and correlation there. I'll be tweeting out uh, before the game, leading up to the game, if I do make any plays, so make sure to follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching this preview. I do appreciate it. Hey, CBS guys, why don't y'all watch the game next time before y'all give me your predictions, Sana.